I like spaghetti westerns. I've talked a lot in these reviews about how much I enjoy spaghetti westerns and how great a time it is to be alive because so many of these things are coming and just pumping these things out on Blu-ray, looking better than they ever have before with really cool supplements and just letting me dive nose first into all kinds of Italian westerns that I've never seen. Uh, spaghetti westerns is the common uh, nomenclature for this, but as I found, I went to Italy not that long ago, and I found that in Italy they call spaghetti westerns Westerns. So I really enjoy the genre and excited to see that VCI has just released A Bullet for Sandoval from 1969, starring George Hilton, who's been in a ton of Italian westerns and all kinds of Italian giallo films and all kinds of things, and Ernest Borgnine, who's just been in a ton of stuff. I guess he had made uh, The Wild Bunch almost possibly directly leaving the set of The Wild Bunch and flying to Spain to make A Bullet for Sandoval, and directed by Julio Bux, or Bux, and uh, it's a title I had heard of before. It's an image I'd, heard, I'd re recognized. Ernest Borgnine looking somewhat like a zombie screaming into the camera is a, an image you don't readily forget. And it's, it's large and in charge on the menu screen for this too, which is great, and on the cover. And uh, it's uh, Italian-Spanish co-production. Most of the Italian Westerns were shot in Spain anyway, Almira, Spain, and areas around there. So uh, it's not unusual to have seen Spanish cast and crew working on the Italian Western. So it was just interesting to see what a Western that for all intents and purposes is what we would call a spaghetti Western with uh, more Spanish names than Italian in the opening credits. So uh, deal here is this. Film runs about 100, well, what does it say on the box here? Film is 101 minutes. That is the Spanish language length of this film. You can watch the film in Spanish with English subtitles or you can watch it in an English dub. But the English dub was only done for the English language version of the film, which was cut by about 10 minutes. So there are chunks and scenes and parts of scenes that were never dubbed into English. So what somebody has done along the way is gone in and done new dubbing for those fragments or scenes in entirely that didn't have dubbing. And it, if you don't know this going into this presentation, it's a little bit distracting because suddenly in the middle of a scene or You've, you're used to what the dubbing voice for a certain actor sounds like, and suddenly his voice sounds different, and it sounds a little crisper than it did before, and that's a little weird, but if you want to see it in English, that's that. The weirdest part is a scene with Ernest Borgnine, where in the middle of the scene, it's a different voice. It's somebody doing Ernest Borgnine with a subtle Canadian accent that uh, it just took me out of it a little bit, so... It's, it's so hard to, you know, what is the best way to watch these films? They were shot without sync sound anyway, so whether you watch it in its natural language or in an English dub, it's, it's dubbed either way. Uh, and it's not even to say that if it's more authentic to watch it in Spanish because the lips will match, because these were always international casts, and a lot of the times, even if they weren't American actors, they were having them speak their lines phonetically in English so that the English dub for export would sort of match. So there's no right or wrong way to watch these. I tend to just go with the English dub on these if that's an option, because that's the way I was used to seeing them. That, that vibe is how I was used to seeing them. But uh, you have your options. Just just to say, if you watch the English dub, it's a little, it's a little weird. So uh, story here is George Hilton set in America, which in my mind, it's always weird. Like I know these movies were made by Italians or the Spanish, and I know they were made in Spain, but they're always set in America, but they never feel like America because I know they were made somewhere else. So it's this weird twilight zone, alternate dimension where it's the trappings of America and it sort of maybe looks like the old West, but I know it's kind of somewhere else. Uh, George Hilton plays a union. No, he plays a Confederate officer during the Civil War who hears that his girlfriend is about to give birth and uh, to his child. So he goes AWOL and he escapes and he gets to the, the home of her father, who is played by Ernest Borgnine, the titular Sandoval in this film, and finds out that, Bor that she has died in childbirth, unfortunately, and Borgnine is not happy about that. He never liked George Hilton as a suitor for her. So he basically hands him the baby and says, it was never mine to begin with. Take the baby and get hit the road. So it's the odd... I keep wanting to call it spaghetti western, European western, where your hero is carrying a baby around. Um, one th I'm not going to tell you the whole story. One thing leads to another. The baby unfortunately passes away. George Hilton is not pleased about this. He blames his, I can't call him a father-in-law because they were never married. He blames Ernest Borgnine and it becomes a revenge film. So George Hilton is AWOL from the army. He rounds up a bunch of scurrilous banditos or scurrilous scalawags, disreputable sorts on horseback. And the idea is to basically wage war against Sandoval and his army or the uh, 
empire that he runs, and it's uh, it's not bad. It's not great. I didn't love it, but it's got some really stylish moments in it. The ending is super dark and really well shot and really memorable, and throughout there are some pretty memorable visuals here and there. So as I've always said, I don't think I've ever seen it, it, genres that I love. I love giallo, I love Italian crime films, and I love uh, spaghetti westerns. I'm not sure I've ever really seen a spaghetti western I flat out did not like. So this was just, this isn't a top tier western, but if you've never seen it, it's very interesting. And seeing Ernest Borgnine in an Italian western is cool. And he's like just crazed at times in this movie too. And you see Ernest Borgnine engage in a knife fight with George Hilton uh, over some pens filled with angry bulls. So that's, and in the, in the way, I don't want to give anything away. Let's just say uh, Ernest Borgnine's final scene is very memorable in the film as well. So extras, not a lot, but they're interesting. Uh, there is a, an uh, audio commentary by director Alex Cox, who is a, he, mostly Alex Cox for the average film fan is known as the director of Repo Man and um, Straight to Hell and other things, uh, Sid and Nancy, things like that. But he's a huge fan of European Westerns and really knows his stuff. So the, uh, while I thought the film was okay, the commentary was really cool and he really gets into all the people and the locations and the styles of filming and other things people had done. And he gets deeply into this dubbing thing that I was talking about. He explains that who did it and why to get that extra dubbing in there and how to make the make an English language version of the film that didn't really exist before. You also have uh, the US trailer, which doesn't look that great. It looks kind of muddy. It really illustrates how good this film looks, how good this transfer looks, because it's what this film would have looked like on videotape or DVD. Um, although on videotape, it wouldn't have been widescreen, and these films were generally pretty widescreen films, so on videotape, it would have been pan and scan and pretty ugly to look at. But it's a nice illustration of the fine work that has been done on this restoration when you look at that trailer. Um, also, there is the original Spanish opening. So that's the opening titles of the film, the opening Spanish title, which is different than A Bullet for Sandoval, and just the opening scene with Spanish text, basically. One thing I do want to say about this, this is a fun release, it's a fun movie, I, I liked it, and it was interesting to finally see it, but the copy that I watched, at least, had a weird artifact going on when I was watching it. Most of the time in the movie, not all the time, but oftentimes, if people were moving horizontally across the frame, it kind of it was a little jittery. It was a little jumpy. And it, sometimes films will do that to just remove frames to speed the action up or something like that. But this happened often enough that I saw that this is some kind of a weird authoring or mastering thing. It's not horrendous, and some people might not notice it. I say that because so many people watch their TVs. They'll watch 4x3 content squash so everybody looks like Oompa Loompas, and they're fine with that. So a large portion of the population might not even notice that this artifact thing is going on. But I just wanted to point it out just so you knew that uh, the copy that I had, the retail copy I had, did that. And uh, it was it was the kind of thing where I would be like, I don't know if I want to keep this now because I, I don't think I could stand watching it like that again. So at any rate, your mileage may vary. Available on Blu-ray from VCI Entertainment is Ernest Borgnine in A Bullet for Sandoval.